Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wine Wednesday. This is going to be a little different today. Uh, I am joined today by Eduardo Dingler. Hi, Eduardo. How's it going? <laughs> great, great, great being here. Awesome. Um, so, guys, before we get going with all of this, I need you guys at home to tell me how the connection is because I've been having um, internet issues all day long. So I just want to make sure that we are good and you can hear us and you can see us and everything is working. So just let me know in the chat that we're good because if we're not good, we'll just move to like Instagram. So just let me know and uh, we'll figure this out. Everyone is saying that the connection is great. Awesome. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Whew. All right. Um, well, awesome. That is great to hear. Uh, Eduardo is here tonight because we are going to be doing something real different and something that I really don't know too much about. And um, that's sake. And I literally have brought the expert here. So, Eduardo, uh, just tell us a little about yourself. Well, um, uh, long story short, uh, born and raised in Mexico, ended up living in Napa Valley. I've been here for over 20 years. Uh, so naturally, I fell into sake, which not really. But uh, long story short, <laughs> at some point, I got the bug about uh, sake, Japanese culture. I started venturing out there, um, going sometimes five times a year. It, it is my home. And, and I try to digest everything I can. I learn something every time, as you know, with wine, it's, it's an ever growing uh, interest and in, in education about it. But uh, I live and breathe sake and wine as well in my in my day to day life. But sake is a huge component. Sake is in my heart. Wine is in my veins. I think that's the best way to recap. Um, I've been working in, in the hospitality industry for decades. Um, most recently, I was the uh, well, a few years ago, I was the uh, global beverage director for the Morimoto Restaurant Group, which led me to all uh -huh. parts of the world, opening restaurants, working with uh, Iron Chef Morimoto, which is a, a, an amazing person, taught me a lot and opened a lot of doors. And you worked <laughs> with Iron Chef Morimoto. <laughs> yes, uh, very, very lucky and uh, uh, great to, to call him a friend. I feel very proud about that and wow. open a lot of doors uh, along my life of, of studying beverage and going through that. I started judging uh, beverage competitions internationally, wow. uh, wine, spirits, sake. And then I started venturing, as I said, into Japan a, a number of years ago where I've been visiting uh, breweries every time I, I visit or distilleries or uh, either sake or beer breweries and whatnot and always, always having that interest. So one of my favorite personal crusades is to share the world of sake and get people really excited about it and, and start drinking more sake and supporting the, the amazing culture that it is. All right, well, I am, I am ready to learn from the master. I have got, this is so cool, by the way. Where's Morimoto? And I know a lot of people that watch me are big Disney fans and you know, there is Morimoto in Disney Springs. Absolutely, so. I got to open that one. Oh, you opened that one. Oh yeah, indeed. And I love the team there. I love the space. It's, it's incredible. It's a magical place, just like Disney okay. is. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Okay, so we got a little Disney connection here, guys, too. So that's <laughs> That's super neat. Okay, um, I have to show uh, you, you you this because I I came prepared, came very prepared. I actually have these. Awesome. And the the best part here too is that these were actually given to me by Anna, and I think Anna's here. Are you here, Anna? Um, cause she actually gave me these and, uh, she is watching right now, which is Those so are beautiful pieces of art. It's incredible. Yeah. Right. I mean, these are gorgeous. These are really stunning. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Um, yeah. So we're gonna, uh, and I get to sip out of these. Exciting. <laughs> um, oh, my mom says hi, by the way, my mom says that we, she wishes she heard you before they went to Japan last year. Oh, amazing. Oh, my God. Well, anytime. You always reach out to me. I'm a message or an email or call away, and I'll give you my, my list. 
certainly. Because <laughs> yeah, so um, if you guys, uh, Eduardo is at Saki Drinker um, on Instagram, so you can uh, check him out there. What a, what a great name, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't deny it. It's just the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. You are the teacher right now, so you got to tell me what to do. Well, why don't we start with uh, the Tamura Sake, which is an amazing sake. And then let's talk about what sake is, because sake to me and to many, many, many people in the world, sake is like the novel that you read that changed your life. It's a whole other door out there or the best movie, whether it's animated or a, 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 a different kind of movie. And it's like the, that movie that connected you to another world. It opened a, a parallel universe. So sake has cool. so much diversity and we'll see it today with the three different sakes where, I mean, at all day we would go and, and try a few different ones. And sake is made of four ingredients and four mm -hmm. ingredients make the, uh, the main one that I think we all know, it's rice. So rice has a big, big part in the composition of the final product. Uh, there's certain rice strains that are used for sake, not typically the one we eat not the table rice. But uh, for mm -hmm. instance, in this one in particular, is made of ginginga rice. Ginginga rice is a sake that is um, grown in Iwate Prefecture, towards the northern part, uh, very small amounts. But what rice does, and it, it best through this style, is it gives a lot of shape, uh, a lot of um, texture, and then sometimes acidity into the final product. So. That is wow. the biggest, biggest component is the starch. So if you were talking about wine, grapes is your sake, if you will. So that shapes a lot. Um, also, uh, talking about rice, it re designates the grade or the level that the, the sake has on the premium scale, if you will. So the more you take away out of the grain of rice, so you buy the rice, you get it at, like a, at the Whole Foods or at your no local store, you get brown rice, right? Uh -huh. So by uncovering the outer layers of it, you start diving into more of the nucleus, the heart, the shimpaku, it's called, of the sake, which gives a lot of more purity, more delicate aromas. Not better or worse, just a different style. So by polishing away or milling, you start creating the different styles. So if you have very minimal milling, it's called a junmai or honjoso. And it, as you get into it 40% or more, to ginjo or dai ginjo, which it all sounds like blah, blah, blah right now, but in effect, it'll, it'll start resonating. And at the end of the day, it's about finding the style you most prefer or with what to share with. And okay. the deepest to the core, 50% or more is called dai ginjo. Dai ginjo gives a little more uh, feminine, delicate styles, a little more fruitier in some ways. So take that, that's the rice out of the way. On the other side of the equation, we have three more other things. We have water, which is utmost important for the imprint of the regionality. So let's compare it to a, a distillery where you're making whiskey or you're making vodka. Water is a huge component or a beer brewery even. So yeah. what the water that you're inputting gives a lot of the minerality, the, the different components that will give a lot of miner, uh, complexity and layers in the palate. So. Okay. Depending on if you're in the north of Japan or in the south, I kind of see it sometimes like Italy, where northern Italy has a little more cleaner, more mountainous regions. Same thing for Japan. Softer, more silky water creates that style of sake, where the south has more richness, more complexity, more minerality, gives this broad shoulders kind of like warrior style of sake generally. The third ingredient is yeast, which yeast is a component that's necessary for to create any beverage alcoholic beverage if you will so yeah. the yeast used for sake not only creates that process of converting the starch into alcohol or the sugars into alcohol but also while doing that it brings out a lot of different aromas and so if you grab a glass of sake and you smell like oh there's a little bit of red apple there's banana there's bubble gum there's uh florals it all has to do with the yeast strain that is used did you and, say bubblegum <laughs> oh absolutely bubblegum's a big component in a lot of the sake which hey who doesn't like bubblegum right yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the things that connects you to a happy place with sake yeah so, very very fascinating the, the world of the yeast strains and the fourth um 
ingredient. I mean, we'll cover more in detail depending on the, on the, the, pro, the different sakas we have. But the fourth ingredient is koji. And koji is a very important ingredient in Japan. K-O-J-I. It is used to make soy sauce, miso, shochu, which is the Japanese distillate, and very importantly, sake. So koji mm -hmm. is this kind of like a mold, let's say. And what it does is because if you're looking at a grape, let's talk about wine, right? So you have a grape, mm -hmm. you have sugar in the grape, you squeeze it, you get the juice, the sugars, uh, the yeast comes into the sugars, converts it into alcohol naturally. But with rice, it doesn't have sugars. So it's a starch. So what yeah. Koji is doing here, it comes in into the starch, brings out the party out of the starch and converts them into sugars for the yeast to convert it into alcohol. So it's a unique process in the world of beverage, which is actually doing it at the same time. And it's just, it just your head explodes. But yeah. basically... Yeah, it, it's a, without koji, you cannot make sake. It's a, it's a natural thing that comes in play and it just makes the party happen. So pretty, pretty cool. unique to this, to this beverage. Um, wow. There's a fifth ingredient, just like if you recall, like the Beatles had Billy Preston in the key sometimes. <laughs> yeah. uh, somebody that hides in the background sometimes. It's called, it, it is brewer's alcohol. So sometimes out of the four ingredients, that's called junmai which is actually the first one we'll try. It is a Junmai, pure, four ingredients, clean. Uh, it gives a little more of richness and viscosity in the palate. Mm -hmm. And the fifth ingredient came in play during the Second World War where there was a shortage of, of food throughout Japan. And the government came to the brewers and said, listen, we all got to sit in this round table and figure out what we can do to still feed the, the troops, the civilians, everybody. And yeah. you can still sake but using less rice so big question million dollar questions they'll sit there they scratch their head what are we going to do so they figure out by adding a distillate a pretty clean distillate it could be made from uh distilled wheat like vodka or it could be uh sugar cane which is very popular thing that doesn't have flavor is distilled to the max and then it's the produced to this amount you add a little bit of the distilled rice once it's fermented and completely done, and then you add water. So what that does, you're making more yields, and also they figure out it creates a different style of, of sake, which we'll talk in a little bit. We'll, we're going to try one of those. And it just, bam, just in sake on steroids, uplifter aromatics, very focused, sharp, almost in some way connecting you more into the, the wine world in terms of the acidity, but it, it opens another, another door. Pretty fantastic. This is amazing. Okay. <laughs> I've learned more about sake in the last, what, 10 minutes than I have in my whole life. So that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, the thing. And let me tell you about something I, I really enjoy about sake and, and my biggest crusade out of like my heart and my soul is to get people to enjoy sake with other things rather than Japanese food. So obviously sushi is a happy place. It is yeah. what we connected directly culturally, and it, it's just an amazing pairing. But secretly, there's a world of things you can pair with sake. I, I truly enjoy like pizza and sake, uh, tacos, Mexican food, Indian food is an amazing friend. It's like imagine these two guys that met from different worlds and held hands and just kept running together. And it's incredible because you have spice, you have complexity. What? And Sake unites with that pretty well. So, yeah, there's no boundaries in terms of, of what you can pair, like barbecue, like smoked brisket. I just had sake. that. The, I just had that the other day. So I can <laughs> add sake with my barbecue? <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. It's just right. like fireworks come out. It's, it's this a is cool. Okay. Experiment. Um, that's really neat. Okay, let's, let's try this. So, um, wait, so I see you have a wine glass. Do I need to pour this in a wine glass? No, um, you know what, as far as sake goes, um, the uh, ochoco that you have, the little beautiful pieces of art work amazingly. The main difference I would say, if you're in a setting where you have a wine glass, um, the difference is that the aromatics really come like wine and jump out. But the ochoco is, is a beautiful ceremonial thing and something I love about Japanese culture in general. So you have these beautiful little ceramic cups that you have in there and you have yeah. your uh, kitty that the larger cup in there and basically when you're sitting in in a table everybody has their own cup and the thing is 
and this is for everybody that visits Japan or a traditional setting, is you never pour your own. So that's a key that I love. I just completely love about Japanese culture. You cannot pour your own. So everybody's constantly looking after each other and pouring for everybody. So you're in constant uh, watching of your neighbor and making sure that they're well hydrated. So isn't that amazing? It's, just, it's a really cool thing. And yeah, you did mention I am drinking out of a wine glass, but basically what it does is in certain styles, especially the ones we're trying, it brings out more of the aromatics. They just okay. jump out of the glass. So uh, what do you recommend I do right now? Should I go get a wine glass and, and try, try and, you know. Sure. Some, if if it's one? handy, go Let for it. Let me try to do that. Helps. Let me get that. I mean, everyone can Excellent. stare at you in your lovely backyard. That is nice. <laughs> I hope everybody uh, at some point either enjoying some sake right now or, or will soon. Everybody that's watching. Bam, that was like a... <laughs> A TV second, <laughs> that was fast. Oh yeah, no, I, I know the route to the wine glass. <laughs> <laughs> That's very important. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. So pour? Yeah, pour, pour a little bit in there. And what you'll figure out with this sake is, is that it's really intensely aromatic on the, on, the, on the nose. It's a parade of flowers. You have yellow, uh, white, and purple flowers are coming out of there with a, like the unique yeast strains that they use, they actually do something very different here. This is a brewery based in Tokyo, one of the few remaining urban breweries and a place that I completely enjoy. I've been to a handful of, of breweries and there's nothing like this. They have a huge white walls, a big Buddha standing at the entrance and the floors everywhere. It's just like dojo floors. floors. You can eat out of any corner of the place. And what they produce, they do four different yeast strains, ferment them simply, and then blend them. So it adds an incredible array of, a parade of flowers and, and fruits in the nose. I, I'm very curious to hear what you think about it. Okay. So, like incredible, it, the, the, I mean, it's really, really outspoken. You guys take seriously like exploding from the glass like um it's very fruity there's there's like i peach uh-huh absolutely whoa <laughs> isn't that incredible yeah oh wow okay so like that was like the smoothest sip of <laughs> This is like a cuz I feel like I don't know if it's the glass no I feel like I am drinking just like a super duper high quality white wine like a sauvignon it's... blanc but like better it's just elevated in, in status. It's, it's certainly something that they've managed to do. So the water comes from an underground river called the Tama River, hence the name of the brewery, Tamura. And it gives very soft, slightly mineral, silky uh, texture to it. But the acid here, this is what, uh, you nailed it, like a Sauvignon Blanc or a, a white wine with a lot of liveliness to it. Because it's, 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 it's it's pretty juicy. I mean, it's mm -hmm. this is obviously it's salivate. It's, yeah. Yes. So it has a fuller body. The but it's dry. Absolutely. But but look at this guy. See how much Vanessa has taught us. By the way, because I know <laughs> she's how amazing. To do this now. <laughs> I look up to her for for everything. She's my guru. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Okay. Yeah. I, you, you know, it's so interesting because I never. Um, have thought about sake as like oh i can have that in place of my white wine my this is where you're getting me to think that way right off the bat immediately no. it's fun it just has this jolt of energy it has so much going on for it um and again it, it's a tiny little brewery that's 40 minutes from downtown shibuya or in tokyo and it's, it's incredible, like it's no, no secret that 
a lot of the presidents and dignitaries from all over the world, when they visit Tokyo, this is one of the nearest ones that they go to. And I mean, when we went to visit, they have pictures of everybody you could imagine from all over the world visiting the brewery, which is, they're super proud of it, of course. But we were just interested in trying the actual sake and they took us a little longer to get there because of the, the museum of pictures they had. Yeah, but pretty incredible. Yeah, no, I, this is this is one of my all time favorites because you can start every dinner with it and carry on. Yeah, this is um, yeah, this is like that good. By the way, guys, all of this, all the stuff we're having tonight is on Wine Access, and I, totally. I guarantee you guys that's something you probably didn't even realize that Wine Access actually sells sake. So that's yeah, there's a list that we've been curating for for a couple of years now, and there's a depth in the story. Uh, a lot of the my personal visits from the actual breweries are in, in printed in the stories. And so, I mean, go crazy. I love that. That's amazing. We've got some comments here um, that I wanted to uh, just bring up here. So uh, Tiffany, thank you, Tiffany. Um, she said, thank you for doing this. I love sake. My dad has worked at Oze Oze Ozeki, Ozeki sake. Yes, it's fantastic sake. Her dad has worked there for 40 years. That's incredible. Hey, a big cheers to her dad. That's that's really incredible. Yeah. Right? Pieces, of, pieces of art. Yeah. Really, really fun. Thanks for, mm. for following us, Steffi. That's so cool. Um, and I saw something else in here. Let me scroll up a bit. Uh, Maddie said, we have a bottle of the King of Modern Light. Oh, Day. yeah. That's okay. one of my favorite babies. There's a long story about that. It took me three years to get the brewery to convince them to export and bring into the US because they were so happy with just selling in their regional area. The first time I tried it was at this festival and I've been talking to the president who's an 80 year old guy, very stubborn. He said, nope, we're very happy selling it here. And after three years, he finally emailed me back and going back every year and bugging him. And he said, oh, there's gonna be 900 bottles allotted to the US and you direct them how you wanna uh, import them and I brought them into wine access and we, we've been doing amazingly. They're actually so happy that they're allowing us to bring a little bit more shortly. So very, very happy with that. So like, I'm glad you guys, you enjoyed it. That's so cool, man. Okay. So this is awesome. I, I, I finished it. I kind of yes. want to pour one. It's I'm, hard I not to. Pour a little, I want to pour a little sip in here. Yes. That way you can see the, the contrast yeah. and the difference. It's still beautifully generous. It is. Totally, but it's its a more wholesome experience in a way. But, yeah, and, and cheers, 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 Anna B. Thank you so much for this. <laughs> that is some of the coolest little chocos I've Ooh. ever seen. You know, yeah, aren't these amazing? There's something really special about drinking it out of this, honestly, like. Absolutely, it's really, yeah. textural experience very spiritual in a way yeah it, it just uh i don't know how to say, uh it, it, like it's very smooth here and then it's smoothness of the sake it just kind of uh -huh. yeah. all goes into the, the same way really cool okay that was <laughs> so so that was just the first one what that was what? just the first one I, i'd say let's let's move on and, and uh, try the second one this is so we're going from Tokyo Prefecture in the east side of Japan, directly flying over the Japanese Alps, or as, as they're called, the Eshigo Mountains in Niigata. So Niigata Prefecture is one of the ones, the places in the world, it's, I like to call it the Napa Valley of, of Japan, Japanese sake, nice. because it's attracted so many people. Like obviously Napa Valley has the microclimates, the regionality, the, the perfect place to grow, especially Cabernet. At Niigata, because of the Alps, the Eshigo Mountains, it has this beautiful water that's allowed uh, nearly, actually just around 90 sake breweries, which is one of the highest concentrations, to gather for centuries. I mean, you're talking about dating back to the 1700s. Um, and breweries have settled there and created a beautiful style because of the water. Also, mm -hmm. grandfathering in like certain uh, rice strains, like uh, 
um, Koshi, uh, Koshi Tanri, which is one the one we're trying right now. It's a Na Niigata's like finest baby in terms of rice. This producer, this is one of my best, my personal friends. Uh, this guy is very charismatic. He's uh, in his 60s. He's a marathon runner. He's like amazing at what he does. He's, he's passing the baton to his son. And every time I see him, it's just... It's just amazing. This big aura about him. He's won several awards throughout the world. I mean, you're talking about world championships with the highest level with this Zach in particular. And he's the most humble, all smiles person you would never think. And he's just just very, very caring. He's amazing. <laughs> so um, a funny story about it. He received a recent award last year and he came to visit us to California. And when I first saw him, he said, you, you won't believe this. I just received this award from the IWC, the International Wine Competition, huge thing in England, based in England. And he said, the award is going to be presented in July in London. And I said, that's amazing, Takeda-san. That's really cool. He said, do you want to come? And I say, uh, well, yeah, that sounds amazing. And you know what? I mean, I'm sure you've, you've had friends and people you you known in your life that will say things like that and it's like oh yeah you just take it yeah. for what it is and it's it's great that you invited me and stuff well that was just the conversation that whole trip right one time and then we went about other things and talked about wine and sake and all these things well in june june like 10th a year ago he emails me yeah. and he says edosan i'm hoping you're coming it's in july in london and it really took me by surprise. I'm like, oh yeah, we had that conversation. And in true Japanese fashion, he meant it. It was like, yeah, you oh, said yes. Right. So yeah. long story short, I put packed my bags and I headed over to London. And yeah. so there's this big ceremony. I mean, you're talking like an MTV awards kind of ceremony. I, I did not know what to expect. It was, <laughs> it was DJs and music and lights. And it was like wine and sake. It was a huge, massive festival, right? All the people that I've looked into, the, like up to in the wine world were there. People that write the books that uh, talk about wine. So everybody was there. And instead of just having me in the background, obviously he was kind enough to invite me, put me in the table yeah. and all these things. He actually had me over to receive the award with him. And I was just, imagine, I, I was like, all tingly, I was like, just pinch me. And yeah. I asked him, Takeda-san, why you didn't bring your son? And he said, Edo-san, today you're my son because my son is actually working because it's brewing season. <laughs> so he said, somebody has to make the sake. <laughs> so I was, I was beyond. It was That's like, the yeah. sweetest thing ever. Oh my God, yeah, it's incredible. But that really translates into his sakes. So he has a couple of tricks under his sleeve. He's not quick to tell, talk about him, but something we noticed at his brewery in one of our visits is that he ages his sake at a low temperature in the back of the brewery. He keeps his room like 38 degrees, 35. You need a yeah. scarf to go in there even in summer. And while doing mm. that, you concentrate a lot of the aromas, the richness and texture, which has been like his signature in style. So what do you think about this one? So, okay, this one is not as uh, bursting out of the glass. Yes, it's more serious. It kind of draws you in rather than coming out. Yeah, what, what, I, what is that smell though? I am, ha I'm having, I'm actually having a hard time placing what I'm smelling here. Which is, is fun. Yeah, it, it's part of the, the beverage world, you know, and it's no wrong answer, but it, I tend to find a little bit of like fresh cut red apple, just like cut it, kind of smell the skin of it. I get a little bit of lime cyst just in the background, like somebody's cesting lime like right next to you. Um, I get some minerality. And once you start tasting it, it's like a little bit of touch of cotton candy. Uh, I mean, it's undescribable. The, the okay. amount of things you pull out of this sake. Cause, uh, okay. Right? You need a seatbelt for that one. <laughs> it's like what? Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. 
you're not kidding with the cotton candy, the ball. I see why you said bubble gum. Okay, so when I, when the, the, so this tastes completely different than how it smelled to me. So I was smelling like, um, like stone. Uh huh. De a very mineral complexity to it. He's in okay. this valley in the back of the of, of the mountains that gives that really imprint of the mountains. Just imagine. Sometimes it takes a hundred years, they say, for the water to come from the top of the of the mountain range to the bottom. So you're adding all these minerals as the water's collecting, and then you're making the sake out of that, and it just brings this chunk of of limestone and and slate into the actual sake. Okay, so that's, yeah. Um, that's why I'm getting, because when I smelled it, I'm like, it just smells like a, uh, like a, a gray rock. <laughs> like, uh <-huh. laughs> and, 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 and. The absence of, of aromas. <laughs> yeah, and now, um, now it's literally like, really kind of fruit forward and um that little hint of that that bubble gum sort of deal comes in at the end for me uh-huh that's yeah it, it's really fun and it just keeps going and going and going and then i'm getting um similar to wine i'm getting this like dry here this uh -huh. mouth uh, almost tannic in the gums yes how, yes. how is that possible it's a lot of, I mean, he doesn't just, just tell you about a lot of his secrets, but obviously the yeast strain that he's using is the natural occurring yeast that's in the ambient. He's using the Kosh Tanre rice, the water that's very unique for the valley that he sits in and rich of minerals and the aging in these glass vessels that are 18 liters. And he just leaves it there for months. And the coolest thing about it is like, this is like a grandma that doesn't follow a recipe. It's like, my nona used to like make marinara a hundred times, never once measure, and it always tasted the same. It was like a full of heart, right? So that's the same with, that's the same with me because my mom's side is all Italian too. Oh, so. there you go. Yeah. And they didn't, because yeah, my grandma and, and great grandma, they didn't measure anything. Never. Yeah. And it always tasted amazing. And it's just yeah. like by heart and no brain. So for him, aging the sake goes like that. Mm. He just keeps going back and tasting it never puts a date he doesn't say like oh i'm gonna do this six months this year or nine months or whatever it just tasting tasting until he's this is ready and bam bottle it and it just adds so much depth and richness to it there's no much sake like this and this is one of the ones that i always say you will find me uh, once a month or so hiding with a bacon cheeseburger in a corner and this sake and don't bother me because I'll bite you. I'll be, I'll be so happy in that place. <laughs> now I'm just picturing you in the corner back behind you on your <laughs> yeah. left, just like. Right. Oh yeah, <laughs> dipping this sake and, and taking a bite of a bacon cheeseburger, just juicy and just having the perfect time. This is like happy place. <laughs> it's like. This is, this is, this, this yeah, this is uh, Eduardo. <laughs> <laughs> totally. You're re it's like you videoed me, yeah? <laughs> like you took a quick snapshot of what I do every once in a while. So everybody knows, do not bother me. I mean, you see this bottle, you see a bacon cheeseburger, you smell, it's like, I, I am in the ninth heaven. It's, it's incredible. So, man, this is crazy. Like, it's seriously, um, you know, there's a lot of comments here that, you know, people are saying they really, you know, did not know there were so many types of, of sake and then that there were uh -huh. all and the pairings that you've already talked about. But now I can see it after I've tasted these. It's like, yeah, I would want a, a burger. Yes, I would want some pizza with this. It makes sense. Totally. It's, it's a opening a Pandora's box. It's, it's pretty incredible. And yes, we have just four basic ingredients always. And just the methods of production that you, you can put to use out of that and temperatures and water and everything just opens for an incredible array of different, different styles. And which leads us into the next one, which is a complete Batman style. And we'll go into details with that one. Okay, let me do a sit. We're this. We're gonna do our, our 
you know, honorary sip here. We're going yes, to, you know, I feel like we have to do that there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow. Heartwarming, right? <laughs> Us, this is, guys, let me tell you something. I'm having a good time and I needed this today. <laughs> <laughs> After all of those things, they just, everything comes together. <laughs> <laughs> Man, let me tell you something at like, what did we start this, you know, at six o'clock at like 550, I was uh, talking to Eduardo and I was like, I don't know if the internet's going to work tonight. So <laughs> we'll just see what happens. <laughs> but it's working. The stars align. Exactly. It's pure magic. All right. <laughs> I know, man. I just, wish, I just wish I was where you are because that setting is like perfect. Oh, you know what? I'm going to text you my address. And whenever you have a chance, you come over here and just chill here. We'll barbecue. We'll drink a lot of sake with different things. <laughs> barbecue at Edwards with the sake. I'm there. Everybody. Let's go. I'll send the address to everyone. <laughs> just, <laughs> just give me a 10 minute notice. <laughs> <laughs> the fridge is so always full. Not only food, but plenty of sake. So I'm sure be you, my you, guess. Are, you, you are a sake drinker. So, I know. am a sake drinker. And you know what? I, there's also a lot of wine and champagne and you name it. But sake has a big, big component in our it. household. <laughs> so. I love this. All right. I am. I guess we're, we're, are we going to do the, the next one? Yeah, let's do the, the, the final one. All right. Final, but not final, final. We'll, um, we'll dive into a, a really interesting world here. So Takachio. It's also in Niigata, which, as we mentioned, it's the, the, one of the biggest places with the most producers out of Japan. Now, this guy, he's the complete opposite of the last two we've tried. We've tried tradition. We've tried a lot of um, uh, proven uh, recipes and ways that you do from the heart, like Nona used to. This guy, he's like the ultimate... Uh, folk hero for a lot of the youth generation. So okay. let me back that up with facts. So in Japan, sadly, the domestic consumption has gone down over the years, like steeply. So wow. being because a lot of the young generations are presented with more beverages to drink, not only sake, but now they have craft brewery, they have uh, cocktails, they have wine, which there's some amazing, not only Japanese wines, but obviously, as we know, from all over the world. So you start getting all these different options. So the domestic breweries, so let's say in the 1980s, there was 3,000 sake breweries. Right now, there's 1,400 sake breweries in operation. So we lost 1,600 in the matter of three, four decades. Oh. And that's mainly tied because there's just not enough people domestically consuming. Now, the good news is that export is on the rise. The US were on the lead uh, together with the UK with France, uh, Australia, and China have definitely taken on a big role drinking whatever pieces of art they're being produced and just artisan style. So when I'm go I go to this festival in Niigata, which is the largest sake tasting festival in the world. And I get invited by a friend and he says, you got to come, you got a hotel, you're coming. So I, I end up like stuck in a corner and I was like I'm not gonna miss it so I go this year that I went to the first time they recorded 142,000 people for a three-day sake tasting festival in a conventional size convention center in the middle of Niigata I mean yeah as okay. you're smelling this I could see your face this is like bam as <laughs> an instant yeah. smile <laughs> the opposite of the last one in terms of the Completely. nose here completely the, where the last one was more serious, it was like more Sean Connery, more wise. This one, it's like, bam, let's go to a party. Let's just go ride all the rides at Disney. Let's just, bam. Yeah, I feel like I don't even need to get my nose in the thing because <laughs> it comes it's to just, you. yeah, exactly. Like, this is one of those that is literally like, <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's just complete wow. fireworks, just all the way. So I go into this festival and there is, I mean, I don't want to go too much into details, but there's like thousands of people in line to wait. They're like stretching and drinking water and vitamin drinks and stuff. 
you go in and you go visit all these producers. And I go with my friend. He started, we started seeing, saying hi to friends. And I see this booth with the Takachiyo. And the guy that's behind it, it's this guy in a vest. And he has a ponytail and a, a little bit of facial hair and glasses. And he's just really cool. He's like in his under 30 even. And he's just talking sake and very animated. And there is a line around the booth waiting to taste his sakes. And okay. the coolest thing that mm. really hit me is that the people that were following his sake were like all in their 30s, if not lower. And it was like, oh. cool, this is attracting a, a younger generation. Yep. So I asked my friend Kazu. Uh, my friend Kazu was the one that brought me there, picked me up in Tokyo, drove like a maniac through the mountains and got me through to Niigata. He is in his like, mid-60s. Yeah. And I asked him, Kazu-san, tell me about this guy, Takechiyo. He's like, oh, they're crazy people. And I said, yeah, that's why I want to know. So he says, yeah. okay, I know them. I'll introduce you. So we go, of course, this guy, my friend Kazu, is born and bred in Niigata. So we go through the back of the booth and he goes with me and he, he starts pulling the guy in the back and he says, hey, I got to introduce you to my friend. He's like, okay, one second, one second. And he's like pouring sake for this line of people, right? And there's like a couple of people, but not enough. And finally he turns around and he says, Kazu-san, good to see you. He's like, oh, this is my friend Eduardo. He comes from California. He came all the way for this event and he loves sake. So tell him a little bit about you. And the guy's like, it is so nice to meet you. Such an honor. He starts pouring me all the sakes and he starts telling me roughly what it is. But obviously he has a line of people behind so he can spend much time. So I say, let's just meet at a different time and talk further. So in the meantime, what I captured is he's making different sakes. Uh, he has a lineup of 10 different chapters under this label. And every sake is made with the same polishing of the rice, which is 59%, hence the label 59. You can see that. Okay. Everything's made to the vintage. So this one's the 2019 release. Yeah. Uh, he does very small batches. Everything's done with the same yeast strain and everything's very controlled. The only difference for every chapter is the yeast, the rice strain. So in this case, it's Miyama Nishiki rice, which is from Nagano Mountains, from a beautiful part of like in Japan. So each, each chapter tastes so different and just because of the rice. So he's experimenting with what the rice can bring to the party. So it's really incredible yeah. what, what he's doing. In this case, this uh, chapter six, I mean, Percent. as you said, it just jumps out. It's just to me, it's farmers market. You're working, you're walking in the morning in the farmers market, and there's bags of fresh blueberries. I mean, I mean, yeah. yeah I want to hear what you think. <laughs> this is like, yeah, the fruits bursting out of here, much like a. I mean, this is real. It's, it's kind of like I'm smelling. Uh... Yes, blue. it is the dark. How is it dark berries in a sake, though? Right. I mean, it's it's all about the 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 rice that's being put on a pedestal with the same qualities of the water that's occurring in Niigata and the yeast strain that he's using. And it's just, I mean, it's a question of factors. And it's just. Bam. And oh. mentioned that's very important. This is a NAMA. NAMA, NAMA unpasteurized. So when you have an unpasteurized sake, it is rambocious. It's a five-year-old kid just running, running, running with so much energy, or like a bull in a china shop, as they say. And it's just so much going for it. I like to refer to this one as licking a battery. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can relate to that. Yeah. But if you look about it, you get that jolt of energy to it, I, I, which you get here. I don't know if you guys saw, I don't know if you saw my face when I, I sipped it for the first time, but I did one of my like trademark, you know, like. <laughs> Pull you back. Yeah, whoa. It, but it, I'm, uh, 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 oh, this is like, my mouth is watering. Right? It's, it's like riding a roller coaster. It is like you just went to the highest peak and dropped. 
so much fun. I mean, this is one of my favorite with curry, with either Indian or Thai curry, with like so much complexity and spice or mole or things like that that just bring you so much to the party. Sometimes even hard to pair with the right wine. This is the secret key. How? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm honestly kind of blown away by this because I, I really never thought. You just you, sake, Japanese. Uh -huh. That's it. Um, tasting the three that we just did, it, it is. Uh, and I'm telling you guys at home. Like, if you could taste, if you could taste these, and if you have a sake at home, taste it tonight, like for real, uh, because you're gonna see, like, oh, wait a minute, I could have this with other things besides sushi, and I can't. I'm just I'm kind of blown away by it. And I don't even <laughs> know which awesome. one I like the best. I don't even know if I could say I like one better than the other because they were the three of these were all so different. It's hard to pick. And I, uh, to me, I feel like that. I feel like they're kids. And as Vanessa says, the, there's always a favorite one. But no, it, this is just all depends on what are you wearing that night for the party or what are what is your secret ingredient for that night? It's so much, so much fun and difference in between. I I, I I love this, man. And for man. everybody at home, don't don't be scared of opening that bottle of sake because Max, as you asked me earlier, um, yesterday or today, is once you open the bottle, it lasts. It's so forgiving. I have bottles in my fridge that are there for months. Just date it in the bag, have fun with it. All it does, it gains a little more richness. Okay. And as long as you keep it in the fridge, you are completely safe. You can enjoy one little sip every two days, every week. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's, a, it's a very... So, like, for how, how long? Like, I can keep this in the fridge for... Oh, my God. I mean, I have some tacachillos in my fridge that I've opened and I, I just as an experiment. Because when I used to run restaurants, I used to always test wines and sakes for the longevity by the glass program, right? So yeah. in a restaurant, you're opening it, you're pouring a glass. How long is this going to take me? So with sake, especially with Takachio, being on and everything, I have had great success with four, six months, and it's still given different things. It evolves. Don't get me wrong. It evolves a little bit, but sure. it just opens different doors, and it doesn't go bad. It doesn't turn sour. It doesn't go into vinegar like wine does. And is it... O okay with just the cap on it oh absolutely yeah just put the, the cap make sure it's tight put it in yeah. the back of the fridge either keep drinking or forget about it and it's just it, it's a beautiful experiment so i guess too in a way sake give you more bang for your buck too you hey. <laughs> yeah i mean i never thought about it that way but yeah it sure it does because let's say you're just having like this much, uh, 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 you know. Yeah, as a pairing, yeah. I, yeah, because, okay, I have a question actually. Wait, cheers yeah. to uh, cheers to Anna again on-, on Cheers, Anna. <laughs> yep. mm. I have a question. We know like how much a pour of a wine glass is usually. Oh, yes. How, what is the like ounce pour on a, on a glass of sake? Usually it's smaller. So with wine, it's about five to six ounces, depending on the, the place or your house. I mean, you can go 12 at your house, but who's counting? But with sake, you usually go around three to four. So it's, it's less because it often packs more umami or more richness, more delivery to it. Also, the alcohol is slightly higher. The alcohol equivalent of sake in general it's about a glass of Zinfandel, like a California generous Zinfandel. So you're talking about 15, sometimes 16% yeah. uh, would be your, your like middle ground in there. Yeah. So you pour a little bit less, it gives you yeah. so much, much more. Also note that the bottles are like 720. That is like the average export uh, size and the Teca yeah. is 500 ml. So enough mm -hmm. to, to share and stuff if you're, if you're enjoying a, a beautiful evening with your significant other or friend and stuff, uh, easy going. So, okay. Yeah, this, uh, you can easily get through. I mean, like guys, you can definitely get through a bottle of this in a night. I mean, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. 
But if you're into experimenting and trying different things, yeah. 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 <laughs> you're free to do yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. But when you go to um when you go to a restaurant, like let's say you go to Morimoto and you order, you know, you order a glass of sake. Or how do they usually do do that? So um usually it's gonna be in something depending on the on the property because we played around with different ones like the one in disney is going to be slightly different than the napa or new york and what um so in some places it's going to be a smaller version of a wine glass um in some places it's, it's a shorter uh, sort of a shot glass that has a, a wider uh, base that gives a lot of the aromatics and in some cases will be like even an, on a choke or a shot glass like taller so okay. you will see when you go to your favorite a uh, sushi place like your mom and pops kind of place in your neighborhood sometimes they'll pour out of the shot glass they'll put it in a wood box and they put it in a little plate so what they do is they over pour the sake in the shot glass so it over pours into the wood box called the masu box so then what you do is you drink out of the glass you pour from the box into your glass and you keep enjoying it. and it's a sign of generosity oh, oh okay so wait a minute I got. I gotta. Show, I got. I gotta show you this. Just okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One, one, one minute. I gotta show you this because I think I have perfect. I'll, I'll, I'll pour a little more of, of another sake while while we wait, and uh, cheers to all of you guys because this is a lot of fun, and I hope you're enjoying. Okay. 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 Oh, look at this! I come back. He's he's having some sake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Oh, there it is. Oh, it has your name on it. That's so incredible. Yeah, I got this in Epcot in uh -huh. Japan. Um, this was during, gosh, I, I can't remember which, you know, they've got like their food and wine festivals in Epcot. Yeah. Um, and this was during, I think it was full. It, it was during um, Festival of the Arts, I believe, at Epcot. And they, they had that this. That is so and, cool. Yeah. They, they did this for you. So and that is your Masu box. Do you know the significance, historical significance of this box? It goes back centuries. Everybody, every person in, in Japan a in, in few centuries ago used to have one of these. And this is your own personal box, right? You go to work. They'll, after your hours of work, you get paid in rice the full amount of that, which is 180 mLs. So you bring home your rice. You bring it to your wife, you pour the rice out. While your wife cleans it and washes it and cooks it, you go to your favorite watering hole, aka a bar, and you drink out of your cup, of your massive box, and you're drinking. That's 180 mLs. So you drink one or two, and then you head back home when the rice is ready and repeat the next day. So that is what you're holding. You're holding a piece of history there in your hand. Really cool. <laughs> So, because when we had it in Epcot, yeah, it was served in here. Uh -huh. And we, we yeah, drank it out of here. Pour. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Super cool I thing. Got... It's one of those things about the ceremonial aspect of sake. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. And it, yeah, that's wow. Okay. So now I know more about this. See? Wow. <laughs> Guys, you get a crazy amount of, of information tonight or what? <laughs> like, <laughs> Hope it wasn't too you... much. Feel free to slow me down. <laughs> no, this is amazing. Um, but do you guys have any questions for Eduardo before he goes? Um, any questions that you have? Because uh, you, you're talking to the master here. No, um, no, what no, did no. you I, just forget? As I said, I'm always learning. That's my motto. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and share. But you know, you know more than all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I think so. Because people are like, people are loving this. Okay. Um, <laughs> Didi. Didi said, I'm glad I'm sober so I can remember all this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cheers to that. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch this back. Um, okay. So, um, okay, Maddie. Maddie says, what does SMV stand for? Oh, that is an amazing question. So SMV, which you'll see in some of the packaging here, what's the easiest one? 
right here, you'll see SMB, yeah. which means second meter value. So when you have this second meter value, yours is much, much clearer. So um, remember, higher is drier. So if you see a plus 10, it's super dry sake. If you see a minus under zero, means there's a little more sweetness to it. However, it's, it's not always as perceptual as it sounds. And it, it sounds crazy, but you will see some minus 10 and you will taste it and you're like, wow, the acidity here is redeeming the value of it and making it drier in my palate. It's like Riesling. Sometimes you might find some really sweet Rieslings, yeah. but the acid brings it up. So it, it drinks drier. Yeah. So this is a plus one. That and as you know, it's like a piercing, sharp, kind of bright acid kind of thing to it. Yep. And yeah, they all have like a sacrometer value. It's basically a tool to connect the consumer to the brewery based on chemical data, which is fun because you can go to the store and say, well, I really like dry sake, so I'm going to go on a plus two, plus 10, whatever yeah. you can find. And yeah, the only disservice about it, as I mentioned, is that like the Katafune, it is a minus three, but it sure doesn't drink sweet. It just has richness. All right. So, oh man, so that's a little tricky then. It is. It can be very tricky. I don't always go by those. But it's, it's, it's a fun rule of, of thumb for whoever's like experiencing first with sake. It's like, okay. okay, well, then go really far on the spectrum and see what you find. See if you find it really awesome. And then if not, scale it back. Okay. Um, great. Let's see. Um, Kevin wants to know, what is a good sake to start with for someone who's never had it? Oh, my God. So this is a rule of thumb, Kevin. Junmai <laughs> Ginjo. Junmai Ginju, as we mentioned on the, on the polishing levels, sets you right in the middle. It's a happy place to start because it has a, a vibrant note to it. It's not too rich. It's not too light. It's just a happy place. It's like Goldilocks. It's just a beautiful point to start. So start with Junmai Ginju. I would say Niigata because it's, a, it's a sort of a beautiful, neutral, mineral-driven area. So you should be pretty happy with that. And feel free to uh, messages on, on either wine access or socket drinker, and I'll, I'll be happy to point you into some. Cool. I'm going to type that in the chat here, guys. So you can see that, how it's spelled. There you go. <clears throat> Perfect. Um, okay, let me see what's next here. Uh, wow. Um, oh, Zara wants to know about hot sake. Ah, that is an open door. That's awesome. So, hot sake. Let's, let's start by saying, historically, you have years and years, centuries of people drinking hot sake. If you were a samurai, you would drink hot sake to kind of heal from your wounds in the war. You would drink hot sake in uh, cold weather to kind of just warm your heart, if you will. Now, fast forwarding, there's a lot of uh, hot sake out there that is made artisanally to drink hot. So it, it act, actually opens another dimension with sake that you can drink it in several temperatures. And there's an experiment I love doing, especially more when I was in the restaurant floor, is you can grab one sake, let's say the Katafune, for instance, and you can grab it, you can heat up a cup, another one room temperature and the other one ice cold and pair three different dishes with it. It's amazing. And it's something you cannot do with wine. And it just, bam, opens all these doors. So wow. just as a rule of thumb, usually Junmai and Honjozo, which are on the le lower level of, of, of polishing in the grade scale, are amazing for that. But if you grab a, a Junmai Ginjo or Junmai Dai Ginjo and heat it up, you might take away some of the beauty around it, some of the florals and pretty things around it. So okay. hot sake is really amazing. Uh, you also find a lot of hot sake that comes in wood in, in uh, cardboard boxes that is made more in bulk. And because when you heat it up, you take away some of the imperfections as well. So it, it becomes like a two double-sided thing, but it, it's amazing. I started drinking hot sake. That's how I got into okay. this beautiful world. And it's a fun thing. And then from there you start leading into cold sakes and unfiltered, filtered, all these things. Cool. There was, 
Okay, so there was another question which you kind of answered here. Is it better chilled or with ice or room temp? So I, uh, this is a really rule of thumb for me, okay? And you can ask 100 people, you might get 100 answers. But to me, you put every sake you buy in the fridge, take it out, start enjoying it, whether it's with your friends or by yourself or your family, you, who knows, your dog, whoever's drinking it with you. And you start drinking it cold and as enjoy it as it's, it's like watching a, an amazing movie. It's like yeah. watching Asia develop in, in your eyes. It's like as it warms up in your glass, mm -hmm. it gives you different things and it draws you in differently. It develops different characters. I can honestly say that right now <clears throat> because I started drinking this when it was cold. I had it in my fridge at uh, like 40, uh, 48, something like uh -huh. that. Now it's certainly not that. It's probably more like in the 60s by now. And, uh -huh. and, and it just brings out different layers in the story. Yeah, it keeps yeah. changing. Now I'm ready to watch Fantasia. I mean, <laughs> there you, know. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Fantasia, well, Fantasia while you're drinking some sake, that's not like that. Oh, there oh. you go. Start oh. with a cold bottle and then enjoy it through. <laughs> oh, guys, that could be that's a thing. what you should be doing. The next well, you, you get a bottle of sake, watch some Fantasia. I think that, that'd be a trip. <laughs> right? That would be a trip. I love this. Okay. Um, I got one more. Okay, wait. Uh, oh, I'm scrolling back here. <clears throat> What's up, RJ? My buddy RJ. Oh, so this is this is like so. RJ said last year he had sake at Epcot. Peach. It was a peach passion fruit and yuzo. So ah. that that's when they take something like this and they do something crazy. Yeah. So there are sake. So we're talking about there's different layers of the sake, right? There's the, the pyramid, which we talked about. This is like the premium styles, if you will. Not better or worse. It's just a, a controlled designation by the government. But also, under layers, you have sake that's infused. It could be infused with hibiscus, yuzu, uh, lemon, any citrus, anything yeah. like that. And the one you had, um, RJ, it's probably one of those that got infused with some natural fruits. And it creates like an instant cocktail. And it's delicious. You can yeah. have a yuzu sake and just sit by a pool and enjoy it all day. And usually they tend to be lower alcohol and quite enjoyable. I mean, yeah, and sake and cocktails, it's like, don't, st it's not like, don't stick your nose up. Like, you don't have to just drink it neat all the time. If you enjoy it with a little bit of like cranberry juice or pineapple juice or whatever it is, start the party that way. And then you can graduate into drinking it normal. Like, uh, more purist, if you will. So what well, do you think as it yeah. develops? I went back to the first one just now. I was like, oh, let me, let me see how that's tasting it compared to like the third one we did. So the, the third one is the most like, the third one is oh, definitely yeah. the most, yeah. The third one is just like, like uh, <laughs> Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. It's just like, ah, it's like it jumping is. out of the glass. <laughs> It's so true. Oh my God. So I see it. <laughs> so we went, so I feel like we kind of went like this, as far as bursting out of the glass. So the first one is like here, then we went here, and then we went there. And then it just jumped. It's like literally a roller coaster. You went like up and down. It's really neat. Um, wow. This was this was amazing. I mean, like, it's quite learned... a pleasure to, to to be with you and sharing some sake with with your audience and love the questions. Yeah, and I'm sure there'll be more. And uh, oh, we can you plan know... on doing this again. As I said, we can talk about this for hours. <laughs> it's like the hard thing is to stop me once I get going. Right, right. Yeah. So I think. Um... I think guys we should do this again. What do you what do you what do you guys thinking? Uh by the way, Eduardo, the people love you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Very honored. <laughs> oh man, the people do love you. Um uh yeah, people are yeah, they 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 they're gonna want you back. Um oh okay, before you go, I got one more question. Because this is a good question comes from Patrick. 
Can you make real sake outside of Japan or is it like champagne? Oh, I love this question. You really nailed it there, Patrick. So here's the thing, a little trivia backstory on sake. The word sake means alcohol in Japan. So if you're a first time going to Japan and you go out in the skirts, no, no, not Tokyo because it's very metropolitan, but you sit at a bar and say, I would love some sake. They would say, uh, what do you want? You want whiskey? You want uh, beer? You want wine? Sake is everything. Sake is alcohol. So the word sake, it was started to be used to export, right? Because it, it made it way easier to, for people to relate. It's like, oh, this is sake. Perfect. So the word for sake, as we know it in Japan, is nihonshu. Nihonshu means Japanese alcohol. So if you go to a, a bar mm -hmm. and you say, I'll take a nihonshu from uh, Tamura Shuzo, Ginginga, Jurma Ginjo, blah, blah, blah. So that is what you mean. So just because of that piece of trivia, you cannot protect it as sherry, champagne, cava, all these different things, Prosecco, right? You, it's never been able to be protected. So you can. Wow. And that's a beautiful thing about it. And oh, again, tying it up to the Japanese culture. I've had experiences with uh, sake made in, in uh, Denmark, mm -hmm. Germany, uh, Spain, Mexico has a sake brewery that's incredible. Wow. And in the US, we have nearly 20 breweries that are producing sake and cold sake. So unlike other beverages, uh, it cannot be protected. Now, the coolest thing in Japan, they started this festival where they invite every sake brewery from the world and celebrate it. And all the highest names in the sake world in Japan come to taste these sakes and really uh, embrace it. Rather than saying, no, this is our thing, there's a, this is amazing. You're carrying our flag and spreading it and getting more people interested in what we do. So it's pretty cool. That is... <laughs> wow. Okay. But there's your, there's your answer right there, uh, Patrick. That's a great a long answer. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's great. No, that's great. So yes, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this again, guys, because like the this was this was so cool. We learned so much tonight. I know Maddie's watching right now. She's moving to Japan awesome soon. So like this is wow. That, wow. that is yeah. so cool. So, <laughs> that is, one day I'm going to end up saying the same. I, I cannot wait. I found a real home in Miyazaki in the Isle of Kyushu in the south where it has my name on it. And it's just a matter of when. <laughs> but, and, but, you, but you got that view right there. You're looking where you are. Oh, I know. I, and as I said, you're welcome many time, but we'll, we'll keep both. It's fine. <laughs> you can all, we'll have another view over there. That's amazing. <laughs> I, you, my view compared to your view, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You, you're in a beautiful part of the world. <laughs> it's like, I, I, am I just too. have a backyard. <laughs> yeah, I know. I need one of them one day. <laughs> one day I'll get one of them. We, we Anytime. <laughs> man, this was fun. So much fun. Um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're going to do one more little cheers, you know. Oh, thank you. Gotta, Thank you. Thanks to everyone that, that joined the, the amazing questions. Thanks to you, too, Max. Yeah. This is incredible. Yeah. We love it. We'll Thank you. We'll do this again. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Mm. I love it. Thank you, Eduardo. Uh, we'll do this again soon. Absolutely. We'll continue the adventures. Cool, Cheers. buddy. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> that was... Uh... That is crazy cool, guys. That is crazy cool. Awesome. Thank you, sir. We'll keep in touch. Sounds good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Okay. That was so neat. Oh, my gosh. Did you guys love that? I loved that. Um, I thought this would be like a really cool uh, little change for us all to kind of have this, you know, that was really neat, right? Okay, I know, I promise you guys, that went a little long, 
but I know I, I always uh, promise you guys that we, we go out on the balcony. Which one should I take outside? I'm trying to figure out which one I like the best, you know? This one's the most like bursting with the with the fruit. Um, I'm trying to figure out which which. All right, we'll do this. Do we do it in the little sake? Do we do it in here, or do we do it in here? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Cotton candy, or do we do the cotton? You, you you think we do cotton candy one? This one was the one that that had the cotton candy. Which was so interesting because it didn't smell like it at all. All right, we're gonna do this. Okay, let's go out. Let me let me let me let me let me run down some of this for you again because this was really neat. <clears throat> so I think that so I just chose this second one to bring outside. Okay. But I don't know. Uh, oh, by the way, it might be really sunny. Oh, we're going to be okay. I think we'll be okay. Okay. Come here, Saki. Okay. Let me scroll back here for a second. What's um Maddie, what's in your cart? Which one was sold out? I've got the second one that we tried. Um, Robert, my shirt has sunglasses on it. <laughs> mm. So, oh, cheers to you, Kimberly. What's up? Thank you. Mm. Wow. Thank you. Um, thank you, Anna, for these. These are so amazing. I'm so happy to use them during a, a live stream. It's so cool. So this, the third one is sold out. Oh. So the third one is the most, uh, most bursting with like fruit, I would say. And this second one though is, thank you, Anna. Oh. The second one is the one where I, I you, you, you expected it to not have anything going on because it smelled like, literally, I really thought it smelled like when you pick up a wet rock. Do you know what I'm saying? And then I, I, I sipped it and everything he was saying about the, 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 the cotton candy and the bubblegum thing and all that, it, it came through, which is so insane. So, it's crazy. Yeah, like river stones, like this is exactly it. It's like, like literally exactly it. Isn't that crazy? I, I, I'm amazed at how much we just like learned.
Thank you, Dee Dee. You know, I've really learned a ton from, uh, you know, Vanessa. Vanessa has been like, she's been our, our guide. She's really taught me all these new terms and stuff. So it's just kind of crazy. Um, so what I'm thinking is, we'll, we will definitely do that again. I think, look at my view. My view is so not as cool. It's kind of sad. I guess my view is pretty cool. Think about it. So we want to do it again? Aren't they great? Both of them are great. That's right, right Kaylee? Yeah. Vanessa and Eduardo, like, I've seriously met some of the coolest people during all of the quarantine, which is so weird. Crazy. <laughs> Kimberly. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany, so much. You have to send you some more to try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I crazy was that that was fun so um here's my am i losing you am i losing you here we're good we're good okay Um, what I think I want to do is what we've done before with Vanessa. We did some questions for her. I want to do the same thing for him. So if we could, uh, if you want to type in some questions here and I will get them to him for the uh, next time we do this, it will be a lot of fun. Okay. You want to keep switching the types of alcohol, Patrick? It's possible too. And this has been amazing. Sediments impacting wine, roots, access to water, climate, all these things affect wine, right? Yeah, it, it is wild. Hey, thanks, Claudia. Sorry, it's a squirrel running across the... Okay, um, going down the list of uh, alcohols, right? That's right, Kaylee, we can do that. Ah, I love her wine Wednesday group too, Didi. Thank you. Cheers. So, okay, Anna, you just said. Okay, so the sake. So I've I've tried obviously the sake you got me from Tokyo. Now, did it taste like bubble gum? When I had it, I didn't get that. But now I'm gonna go back and, and, and try it because believe it or not, it's still in my refrigerator. <laughs> it's still in there. So you can see what he, cause he said the sake lasts forever. That's why I wanted to know too, because I had the sake in, in, in there forever. Okay, cool. So we got questions coming in for um, Eduardo. And if you guys have questions, just type them in here. I'll get them. I'm going to get them to him and we can, uh, we can make this happen. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> So this is a good one. It's like a higher low in calories. Cool. The prefecture effects. Okay, more detail on the grades. That was so interesting. Your question there, Maddie, about the like, like how. And Tiffany, so your dad working for 40 years. So Tiffany, you went to sake for like, was that one of the first things you actually tried? 
Kristen, hi. <laughs> you missed the video, but want to say hi. Oh, I appreciate that, Kristen. You know what, Kristen? Go back and watch this video when we are done, um, so you can watch because we learned so much in an hour, uh, like so much in an hour. Um, what type of dessert is best? Socket cool, Shauna. I'll get that. Uh, yeah, Didi, I got the one from, uh, I got the sake from Wine Access. Yeah. Can I get an invite to your place in Japan? I love it, Eduardo is sitting back there in his backyard in Kappa, and he's all like, yeah, you know, I want to live in Japan. I think I found my perfect place there, and he's sitting in his backyard in Napa. Does this mean we have to expand our cheese pop? like wines to sake now. Mr. Cheesy Pub Winery, Mr. Cheesy Pub Vineyards, Cheesy Pub Vineyards. We're coming up with a better name, by the way. It'll be Cheesy Pub. We're, we're, we're going to figure this out. Don't worry. What is rice wine for that matter? Good question here. I love this. Oh, Maddie. Thank you. They, they are the best. You're buying sake tonight. Did you use my, can you still use my code thingy actually to get a discount? Or is it only in your first order? Um, but like Maddie, you're right. They're the best. You can't use it anymore. Okay, okay. They are the best. Like there's, not even close. <laughs> oh, you bought three cases? Okay, cheers to Maddie buying three cases from Wine Access. Yup. I love that. Tiffany's just for just first order. Okay. Zara, Thirsty Thursday, sake, whiskey, beer. Okay. Yep. Seriously. So you were born the week after he first started working there. Wow. So your whole life, your dad's been in the... Uh, I love that. Oh, man. I love that. Come five. Journey back. I love it. Is on the first order only you get the di my discount? Okay. Yeah. I had a feeling it was something like that. Did any of you, um, like Maddie, you said you get three cases. Did you join their wine club or did you just order like separate? I know Zara's here. You ordered like with, uh, you ordered like separate. What's up, Jansen? How you doing, buddy? Um, Claudia, do I know when Disneyland is opening? Yes, July 17th. You can watch my video from earlier today with all the info about that. So Maddie, you joined the club. Cool, that's awesome. Kaylee, you guys keep making the list of everything you wanna try, then you're gonna order it offline access. Okay. I mean, good, but I would also say, What if they sell out? Taking pictures and sending them to my mom, the wine's like, she's a wine too. Okay, cool. Awesome, Maddie, we love that. Okay. My, my, my mom ordered two. <laughs> my mom ordered two. Yep, they do sell out. That is no joke. I was on the website and I was, I was like, I forget which one, uh, it, it was one of my previous things and I had in the cart and then it was not in the, and then I couldn't do it because it was not in the cart anymore. So do be aware of that. Um, it's because the best thing about this website um, is that they, 
don't get their wines from like uh, you know massive big wineries they really try to look for the ones that are family um, single vineyards so and I guess it's the same thing with the sake like you heard Eduardo talking about like literally going to Japan meeting with the people like really he got to go to he got to go to that whole award ceremony that's so cool amazing so I did it's so interesting when he was talking about what you can pair sake with um, because I did uh, Order sushi. It's just gonna. It, it's gonna be here in a couple minutes. Um, but now I know also that you can have sake with pizza and tacos, and like Eduardo was saying, a bacon cheeseburger in the corner. Crazy. Oh, I know, Dee Dee, hard cider night. <laughs> a bug on my computer no okay um your favorite red wine ever 2018 shinon literally bought a six pack you're on your fourth case <laughs> you're on your fourth case i don't even know what i'm on maddie Yuan you know is great. My um, UPS guy, he now knows me as like the wine guy because he comes to my, my door, he knocks on my door and he's like, Got another one for you, man. I'm like, yup, you do. <laughs> Next time I gotta just be like, look, I, I, I swear, I, I, I just, is for entertainment purposes and but yeah he he's here like you know every week <laughs> it's the same guy <laughs> oh man what sushi do i like um well chili bowl oh man um everything literally from you know hand rolls to you know the sashimi um you know if you're talking like your basic old sushi you know like a spicy tuna hand roll uh it's yeah i got a little variety on the tool play so you can't case i love you guys this is fantastic love this Work expense, yep. <laughs> oh man. This is great. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, I'm heading out of here in a couple minutes too. Um, yeah, thanks, Anna. Cheers to you. Thanks for the thanks for the little cups. We love these. Cotton candy. That's Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yes, my meal right there, Shauna. Your emojis are my meals. That's my meal tonight. Let me check mine. Yeah, it's on its way, almost here. Um, different high from the sake is a good question, Robert. Sake is a little stronger, so um, you you gotta you gotta just be aware of that. You know what I mean? So the sake is definitely um, it'll get you. So and we've we've poured a bunch tonight, but very small quantities. Uh, you know, I, I just but yes, you can definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Where the heck is the sushi? 
It's like it's like two minutes away. So we're gonna sign off. Um yeah, it sneaks up on you. That's sake, Chris, you got it'll it'll hit you. Um great questions tonight. I gotta scroll back in the chat and I'll copy and paste um, some of them for Eduardo for next time. Um, any last minute questions for Eduardo right now, put them in the chat before we go. Uh, and the rest of uh, the week, we shall see. Figure out what's going on the rest of this week. I know Disneyland's uh, opening in a month or so. Uh, I will have, excitingly enough, I made another menu, uh, old menu video for you guys. Put that together so you'll have that later this week. You too, Tiffany. Have a good night. Um, day by day, you know it, Shauna. It is. Yeah, especially now. <laughs> um, I'm going to go get uh, the sushi. We love it. Um, I love what you said there, Maddie. Thanks again for not only showing me wine access, but for the people you've introduced. They've been amazing and so informative. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. We're gonna keep this thing going too, don't you worry. Oh sure, Kimberly, you are so welcome. The double content today. My voice is exhausted, exhausted. Because I also, right before this, had a uh, little voiceover thing I was doing right before the Disney the Disney news. I was I was actually like in the voiceover closet when I was doing the voiceover, and then I saw the Disney news break, and I was like, oh my gosh! So it's been a crazy day. So I'm gonna go eat my sushi and some more sake, right? <laughs> thanks for being here, guys. Um, thanks to each and every one of you. We'll do this again. And now we know a lot about sake. One more sip. Did anyone take a picture, by the way, of me and Eduardo? Can someone do that? Like scroll back a little bit when this is done and get the little, did anyone do that? We were, we were cheersing. I meant to uh, take a picture and I forgot. Oh, well. Domo, do, do, domo arigato. I love it. Yeah, you go back and rewatch Mini Jim Missy. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good night. I got one more sip here, so I'm going to do that and then we're out of here. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Wow. I really like sake now. Oh, boy. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good night.